So hello everyone and welcome to the INSS podcast. We are broadcasting from the 12th annual conference in Tel Aviv. And with us now is Dr. Ilham Menea, who is of dual nationalities, Yemeni and Swiss. She's an associate professor at the Political Science Institute at the University of Zurich and is an independent consultant for Swiss agencies and a member of the Swiss Federal Commission for Women Affairs. And she specializes in the Arab Middle East. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Um, so we are speaking on the heels of your very interesting panel um, at the conference entitled The Arab World, What They See in Us Versus What We See. And you spoke about many things during the panel, but I want to ask you about a specific issue which I know that you publish on and didn't uh, receive any uh, coverage in the panel itself, which is women in the Arab world. Uh, essentially, I'd like to ask you how uh, maybe how uh, Arab countries see Israel from the gender prism. How, uh, what is the situation of Arab women in Israel uh, in comparison perhaps to Arab women elsewhere in the Middle East? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess uh, when it comes to perception from the Arab region towards Israel, there's a lot of misconception, okay? But I would put it this way. If there's something that seems to be um, coming across is that the situation of women in general mm -hmm in Israel mm -hmm. is better. Better than... Than the situation that we are basically facing in, an, in the Arab uh, context. Those who are specialized, on the other hand, okay, and do research, will realize that uh, the, the issue is complicated. Uh, look at family laws and you realize we have here in Israel uh, legal pluralism. Mm -hmm. And that means each religious community has its own family law. And these family laws are religious, and they tend to all to be patriarchal, and they tend to make life of women very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I see in that no difference uh, between Jewish women or Muslim women, with all due respect, mm -hmm. okay, when it comes mm -hmm. to the uh, rights in the family yes. sphere. Um, come closer and look at the situation of Arab women. And you realize that uh, uh, they, they, they may be actually going through what I called in, uh, in another book, Women in Sharia Law, The Impact of Legal Pluralism, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, uh, the dual um, uh, discrimination syndrome. What do I mean with that? Yes. On the one hand, they're stuck in their own close communities, okay? certain patriarchal structures, norms and values that put them at a lower level. Definitely. Um, on the other hand, they are within a, a whole uh, society and system that may uh, be treating them as second-class citizen. Okay, you know, so you see a certain kind, or not really. I'll put it this way because as I understand Israel has uh, its very positive sides. Okay, but uh, when it comes to the Arab minority, one realizes there are differences, and one cannot basically ignore that. Mm -hmm. So, from that perspective, the double syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, double uh, discrimination syndrome, I would describe it uh, is something that Arab uh, uh, Israeli women uh, may be facing. Do you think that the state should interfere in, in, in internal uh, Arab uh, cultural aspects regarding... No, what I, what I what I think is basically is what the, the, the Israeli government right now is... is um, the approach is very um, accurate and that is basically focusing and allocating a lot of budget into empowering um, uh, women um, economically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and one sees that, whether the Bedouin and others, it's like mm -hmm. I, I realize there are certain kind of like um, systematic efforts mm -hmm. uh, to uh, uh, allocate money uh, for uh, their education, for their training, mm -hmm. for their empowerment. Uh, that's, that's a very uh, important uh, so approach. Maybe things are being done, but there's more that can be done, perhaps. And at the same time, and another question, because that is a very important question that you mentioned when it comes to the family laws. Yeah. So because it's, um, from my perspective, and, and I gave yesterday a talk uh, uh, at the Middle Eastern uh, uh, Studies uh, uh, Center um, in cooperation with the Gender Studies uh, mm -hmm. um, Center in uh, Tel Aviv University. Um, you cannot look at the family laws mm -hmm. for of Muslim women in separation of the family laws of other communities. Uh -huh. 
And that would mean that if we are going to um, seek an approach, it has to be a citizenship approach, mm -hmm. one that seek uh, the um, uh, establishment and anchoring of the concept of civil marriage, mm -hmm. you know, with all the rights that are uh, attached to it, mm -hmm. and that allows uh, intermarriage uh -huh. across religious lines. But you know, this wow. is a very, yeah. very <laughs> difficult issue, yeah, of course. very sensitive yes. issue. But from my perspective, if Israel is to is to become a, a real normal state, you know. Okay. fully democratic as we see in other countries in Switzerland for instance then it's just basically that would be the step that I would expect so perhaps on that note connected and disconnected my next question is regarding um, the perhaps willingness of women in the Arab world to work with Israeli women and I'll elaborate. I'm a member of a group called Forum Dvora, uh, Women in uh, Policy and, and National Security, Foreign Policy and National Security. And what we try to do essentially is help one another, empower one another and I think Israeli society is no different to other societies where the, the, the security scene and the foreign uh, uh, policy scene is dominated by men. And I'm wondering, firstly, in the Arab world, if similar organizations to Forum Dvora exist, and if here in Israel we would be, we are very interested in, uh, in cooperating with women from the Arab world who also are in foreign policy and national security and, uh, and finding common ground, if uh, women from the Arab world would be willing to cooperate with us here in Israel under an, an Israeli mm -hmm. identity mm -hmm. and especially in the security mm -hmm. scene, which mm -hmm. I understand is very sensitive. Sensitive. Um, I don't have names in my mind, but yes, there are a network uh, of professional women uh, working together within the region. Uh, that said, I'm not really sure there is one that is uh, that would be equivalent uh, mm -hmm. to your organization, specifically working in the foreign affairs and security um, uh, uh, affairs. Now, working together. Yes, the willingness. The willingness. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, I'm sure there is willingness. It's, um, I've been talking with, uh, you know, when I write, it's, uh, uh, I get responses. Um. And perhaps this is the place to say that you are exceptional in your uh, willingness and openness to come to Israel and you've, you're publishing a series of articles about Israel and Israeli society. So uh, I'm I sure you also get feedback regarding that. Yes, and the feedback is, um, how should I say? Um, <laughs> it's very uh, mixed. On the one hand, you have those who are, they consider me like a traitor, someone who, so, uh, who sold her soul, okay? Um, they, uh, I have the impression they haven't read the articles because uh, I think I was very fair in the manner that I addressed the issues. Um, and uh, while I'm talking about positive sides, I'm talking also about uh, the problems. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about it from, from a perspective that Israel is a state that has the right to exist. Mm -hmm. okay? And that there are problems and we have to deal with it. And I'm, I'm not going to play a game around these issues, okay? But while we're doing that, let's just engage yeah. rather than basically stop talking to each other and throw each other uh, with whatever uh, what we have in our hands and creating, complicating uh, a very um, almost helpless situation, okay? So uh, from that perspective, we have this side. The other side, I had actually, that's that's what made me hopeful. Um, I had... Yes, hope. We need hope. <laughs> yeah, and we need hope. We really need hope for this region, you know. Um, I had reaction from intellectuals. Well, no, you know. Writing to me, I wish I had your courage. Wow. I wish, because the issue is for them, is basically they will be... Um, defamed mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. like I, I knew it's like if I'm gonna come here as I did last year with my, with my husband Thomas mm -hmm. we came as tourists I'm not gonna lie I don't like lying okay um, but at the same time um, it's also you take a risk while hoping that if you remain true to yourself 
people will recognize maybe this is the path that we mm-hmm. have to take. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this is the path because it's at the end of the not day it's not an easy path maybe that's also why not many people are taking it but yeah. it's probably the path to take. Yeah. But but there are people who actually um would love to the the problem that we have for instance let's, let's just talk about um countries that has peace uh, relationship with mm-hmm. uh, uh with Israel yeah. uh, one realizes you have two discourses mm-hmm. you know um one is official behind the scene everything is good we love each other we're working to each other we have common enemies discreet and then on the other hand anyone from the civil society yeah, that's true, level yeah. mm-hmm. who tries to cross that bridge you know um end up um ends up with problems uh, with the security apparatus and 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 that double kind of like tongue is very problematic um i tend to believe um in the long run people will be tired of uh of this lack of prospect mm-hmm. you know we will be tired you yeah. know and we need hope and we need we need a future and i don't think it will be possible to do it without having a common one and let's just do it together so i think that's a brilliant note to end on and unfortunately we ran out of time i could speak to you another hour but unfortunately that's all we have time for so i thank you so much for joining us on the show and i urge you to follow uh, on the inss website and find more podcasts from the conference